Ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard. Having the correct controller settings is the foundation to performing well in Call of Duty Warzone. And in this video, I'm gonna be explaining all the different settings and talk about what works best for you based on your own play style, but also explain what settings are the majority of the top level pro players using and why they use them. And then at the end of the video, I'm gonna be showing you guys my method to very quickly improve your aim, but also get used to and adjust to any new settings you might have changed if you decide to change some. So I'm gonna go through these settings in order. So starting in the first tab, controller, let's first discuss our button layout and this is going to depend on what type of controller you use and also how you hold your controller so if you're on a regular playstation or xbox controller i'm going to recommend bumper jumper tactical for most people or at least just the tactical one and let me explain the benefit of doing this with bumper jumper tactical we can slide with r3 so r3 or pressing the right analog stick is now our prone and crouch button and we can very easily do a slide cancel by pressing r3 l3 r3 l3 and now we can slide cancel and move around without ever having to take our thumb off the analog stick so we can aim and move all at the same time and this is just generally a very beneficial to be able to do both at the same time and not take your thumb off the analog stick to hit these buttons. But with the bumper jumper portion, we can also jump with L1. So again, I can jump and aim at the same time if I want to do that and never take my thumb off the analog stick again. Now that is pretty awkward for a lot of people to get used to, and it will definitely take some practice if you switch. Another option is leaving it on default here, but holding your controller in what's called claw. And this is going to be where we use our right index finger to hit the buttons on top here. So we keep our thumb on the analog stick, but I'm able to hit all these top buttons and whatnot. Now me personally, this is super uncomfortable and just awkward for me, and I just don't like doing it, but a lot of people do great on this. There's a lot of very high level players that play like this without any special controllers. The majority of top players and including myself are playing with back buttons on their controller. So I have what's called an aim controller, and I have four buttons or paddles that I can reprogram to any button I want. And for me, it is all of these buttons here. So my bottom right is my crouch or slide, bottom left is my jump, my top right is to switch weapons or triangle, and then my top left is to reload or is square. Now, if you have a controller that only has two paddles, I'm gonna definitely recommend you prioritize your jump and slide for those. Don't worry about square and triangle. They're not that important if you only have two. So moving on from button layout, bumper ping, definitely gonna wanna leave this off because this is gonna actually interfere with our ability to use our lethals and tacticals. Flip L1, L2 and R1, R2. If you're using a normal controller, I'd recommend turning this on because this allows us to aim with L1 and shoot with R1 and it makes it just a lot faster and more responsive because it's more of a button click instead of a full trigger pull. Now myself, I play with this off because again, on my aim controller, I have digital tap triggers here. So this is me all the way pressing my L2 and this is me pressing my R2 there. It is very fast and easy to do. It's basically like a mouse click. But a cool thing that AIM has is I can turn this on and off by hitting this button here. Now it's a full trigger pull. I can go back. Now it is a mouse click. So if you have like racing games you wanna play, you wanna go back and forth, you can do that with the AIM controllers. For the stick layout preset, this is completely personal preference. For most people, you're just gonna leave this on default. There's no competitive advantage to any of these. But if you play on another one, that is perfectly fine if you're just more used to that. For controller vibration, gonna recommend turning this off simply so that it is not going to interfere in buzz while you're trying to shoot someone. And actually for myself and my aim controller, I actually have my vibration motors removed so that the controller is a little bit lighter. So dead zone inputs is kind of an interesting one to discuss here. And I'm gonna first kind of forewarn you guys and tell you that I don't necessarily want you guys to just copy these settings and let me explain why here for the majority of people when it comes to your right stick minimum especially and also the left stick minimum though we want this setting to go as low as possible to where we do not have stick drift so i am on one which is a very low dead zone here when we look here if i'm not touching anything you're going to see pretty much there is no movement here if there you have a lot of stick drift even when you don't touch your controller your guy is going to be kind of veering off to the side here but even on one, I'm pretty much not moving at all. And the aim controllers, I will say, have very good in terms of the quality when it comes to their stick drift, I would say. 
But for the majority of people, it's probably going to be somewhere closer to like three, four or five to get it to the point where you don't have any drift. And that is perfectly fine. For a lot of people playing on these ultra low dead zones like zero or one is too fast for people. The reason I play on such a low dead zone like one is it allows for my aiming to be ultra responsive but it also means you have to be able to be more precise and have very fine control over the analog stick. So I only recommend playing below a three if you are a very experienced player. But I will say if you're getting to the point where you're like eight, nine, 10 and above and you still have stick drift, it's going to harm you and you're gonna have trouble being very accurate and precise. And that's kind of the point when you really wanna start looking into getting another controller if possible. Now there is a very cool new feature that you can test your dead zone. I moved my camera so you guys can see this so it doesn't block anything. When we turn this on, if you look at the numbers on the bottom, so on the left stick, it says horizontal axis two, vertical axis negative three. That means right now, even though I'm not touching my controller, that there is a constant input of there. So I do have a little bit of stick drift on my left dead on my left stick right now, although not very much. My right stick though is perfect. I am not touching it and I'm at zero, zero, which is, means you have absolutely zero stick drift, which is very, very rare on a controller. If you look now, it actually just went to negative one and I'll move it around a little bit and we'll probably see. So I'm hovering at like negative one uh, on my right stick for the Y axis, which is still ultra, ultra low and very, very good. Please let me know, please comment below where you guys are with your right stick when you're not touching it. I have a feeling most people are gonna be like three, four, five and above. Now the maximums are very different. For our left stick maximum, I like to turn this down a lot from 100. The reason for that is I only have to move my controller to 60% for me to get to full motion. So I'm only moving it let's see i'm not all the way but i'm in tax sprint and that is simply because i have that dead zone turned down so i can very quickly get to full speed when i want to my right stick though we have that all the way at 100 because i want that full range of motion on the stick to have full control when i'm aiming and then for the triggers now for me this literally doesn't matter because i'm running with digital tap triggers but if you had a full trigger, you're probably going to want to turn the left and right down, maybe 20 to 40. That way it's pretty, you only have to pull it. So at 20, you'd only have to pull it 20% of the way for that trigger to kind of go into effect. The lower the dead zone on your trigger, the less you have to pull for it to kind of start working. You guys have heard me talk a lot about the controller that I use, which is an aim controller. And I do want to share with you guys the specific build and setup that I use for it. But I do want to also quickly say that number one, I am sponsored and partnered by aim. And I have been for well over a year now. Um, I am a little bit biased towards them because of that. I just want to put that out there. However, I have used probably like five or six different custom controller brands and they are by far my favorite to use for a few reasons. Number one, they have a lifetime warranty on all modded parts. So anything that is custom, they will cover for the lifetime of the controller. Now people often ask, does this cover stick drift? They have a 45 day stick drift warranty, which if you have excessive stick drift in the first 45 days, you can send it back and they will fix it. But I will say I've probably, they send me controllers every now and then, like when they get new designs and stuff. I think I've probably had like four different aim controllers none of them have had stick drift issues. Um, they're my regular green one that I used to use. I used for over a year and had no stick drift when I was playing on a three dead zone here. And then you guys saw how low my dead zone is uh, with the current one that I'm using. So in terms of that, they are very good from a quality perspective. Also, when it comes to their paddles, they're just paddle configuration and the way they feel are just by far the most comfortable for me compared to any controller. And then finally, their ship times are also so much faster than other brands. Uh, they have a guaranteed 10 day build and ship time, meaning when you order it, they will have it shipped out on the way within 10 days. Doesn't mean it'll be there by day 10, but most of the time when I have gotten them, I've gotten them in 10 days or less. So we are on aimcontrollers.com. Yes, they do ship to Europe as well outside of the, the US here. So they have PS5, they have PS4, and they have Xbox. So one thing I wanna point out about Xbox is the Xbox controllers, you cannot remap the paddles. You can still use the paddles and remap your buttons in the game so that your paddle configuration works, but it has to come with a preset design. But the PS4 and PS5 controllers, you can remap them. So if we go to custom PS5, we're gonna to go to customize now. 
every single controller is going to come with the four reprogrammable paddles. They always come with the active triggers or the mouse click triggers that you can turn on and off. They also come with call what's called snap panels. I'm going to switch my camera over here so you can see, but what snap panels are is a new thing where you can actually pop these pieces off and I can put a new design on and these are just magnetic. They're super easy to do. So when you see me constantly changing designs, it's because I am just changing my snap panels um, and you can order new snap panels if you want, if you decide to change the design of your controller. So there is a ton of different designs. Obviously this is purely cosmetic. We do have my custom T-cap design here, which I would highly recommend uh, you check out getting if you're gonna get one. The rest of this, this is all just different colors, trims. This is completely personal preference. However, the current sale going on right now is it's $239 for a unlimited max controller. So you could literally try to, you could make this price go up as high as you possibly wanted to, and it's gonna stay at 239 with code TCAPTNX. Now, depending on when you're watching this video, that's probably that's probably going to change here. The sales change usually month to month, but code TCAPTNX always works on whatever the active sale is at the time. Now, digital buttons on the front. You can make these buttons on the front digital tap. Personally, I don't think this is super necessary, especially if you're gonna use the paddles, but if you play claw or you actually like to use them a lot, it is nice. They are very responsive, but if you wanna save some money, you don't have to do that by any means. Now for the aim sticks, make sure you choose a color here. It doesn't matter what you choose here. I'll just put black for both because as long as we change the base, that allows us to have the opt-in to, to pick the height. So I run a PS black small on my left and I run a high on the right. It's very similar to having a control freak and you can see the height difference here. It's not much, but it's very nice because it is built in, gives you more room to aim and be uh, more precise essentially. Now, if you, you're like, I don't know if I'm gonna like this, as long as you pick like a small and a high or whatever, or both smalls, they're gonna send you different sizes. So I would recommend doing left small, right high, and you can still change them out for both small or both high if you wanted to. Now we're gonna keep moving on here because the rest of this is kind of more preference here. This is just the color of the paddles. I do recommend getting the rear grip. It gives it a, a rubbery texture on the back. So it's not gonna slip out of your hands when it gets sweaty. You can add your logo and stuff on there. Now smart bumpers, so your L1, R1. This does not come default. This, the bumpers are the regular ones. I do play with the smart bumpers. They are nice to have, but if you wanna save money and not get it, it is not a make or break it kind of situation. You don't have to have those by any means. I do take the vibration motors out. It's an extra five bucks, but it does make the controller a bit lighter to do that. So I added it to my cart and where it says I have a coupon code here. If you put in T Captain X, we're going to get rid of my honey thing that's popping up here. It should bring it down to uh, 239. So it's 261 after shipping, but that is what the current discount is. And like I said, this does change from month to month, but code TCAPTNX will always work on whatever the active discount is. So moving on to the aiming tab, and we're gonna first talk about sensitivity. Now, number one, I wanna put out here, there is no best sensitivity. A lot of different top level players use all sorts of different sensitivities. For example, Biffle, who's regarded as one of the best players, if not the best player in the game, he plays at the default 6-6 sensitivity. Myself, I'm playing at 8-8. Eight, eight. You got people like Joe Woe, who plays 10-10. I think Aiden, I think is playing 7-7, seven, seven, if I'm not uh, mistaken. You have other people though that do play 20-20. So I think Capture, I think Mutech, some of those guys, play at the max out 2020. But here's what I wanna tell you. Number one, if you're playing like 10 or above and you don't have at least a 2KD or higher, you need to turn your sensitivity down. A lot of people like to play on these crazy high sensitivities because it looks really cool and stuff. But I'm telling you, you're just hurting yourself. Unless you are a very highly skilled player, you should not be playing on that high of, high of a sensitivity. So here's a quick way to, to kind of figure out your sense here. So pick a point on a map. I'm gonna look at this zero here and go off to the side and try to flick and kind of stop your aim on it. So there I was pretty short actually. Now, oh, now I'm all messed up here. Okay, so there we go. I stopped on it pretty good, went past it. There we go, there we go. 
And basically you're just gonna go off and you're gonna try to flick and stop your aim. And if you're stopping right on it, that means you're pretty good. But if you're consistently ending up short, you might wanna turn your sense up. If you're consistently going way past it, you might wanna turn your sensitivity down. The other thing I'm gonna say is if you do decide to change your sensitivity, make sure to give it give yourself a few days and even a few weeks to really settle into that and really practice with it before you decide to be like, okay, I need to change again. Now here is kind of a hidden setting and I don't know if this is purely a placebo. If we hit, if we hit the show more, you're gonna see this advanced horizontal sensitivity. And there's also one for vertical as well. For you guys, it's probably gonna be on 1.2. However, I've changed mine to one, but you're gonna notice it is locked. To unlock it, if you go up to your scent and go to custom, it will now unlock it and you can bring it back down to one which should be the default. I don't know if this is purely placebo, but I did change it from 1.2 to one, and I did feel like my sense felt more consistent to how it used to feel before the new war zone. And then when you're done, just go back to whatever your sensitivity is and you're good to go. Now for the ADS sensitivity multiplier, this simply means, so for myself, I'm on 0.85. This means when I aim my gun, my sensitivity is now 85% of what it was hip fire. So hip fire is this, aiming is a little bit slower. And the reason I do that is simply because when I'm aiming the gun, I don't need ultra fast sensitivity. It's gonna slow things down a little bit, but it's still fast enough that if somebody's right in front of me, I can still track them and keep up with them as they are running across my screen. Generally, I'm gonna say if you're playing on like a six, six cents or even lower, you probably wanna keep this closer to one. But if you're playing higher, like eight, eight, 10, 10, 12, 12, then you can start bringing this ADS sensitivity multiplier down so that your sense is slower and more accurate solely while you're aiming. But again, this completely is a personal preference. This is just what I've put on for a while. And a lot of do, a lot of other pros do play on settings similar to this. If you open up the sensitivity multiplier tab, this is just for a few random things. And generally you're perfectly fine to leave this at one unless you have a personal preference for any of these. For your vertical aim axis, this is like if you like to play inverted. So if you're probably someone who's older, I'm gonna guess you're like 40 years or older, you might like to play on inverted. And this means you push or you pull back to go up up and forward to go down. It's like you're controlling a joystick of an airplane. But for most people, it's completely personal preference. You're probably gonna wanna leave that on standard for those. Now, tack stance is a new thing this year and tack stance is when we aim our gun and we aim to the side like this. Um, you can control the sensitivity for this. Now for myself, what I decided to do, which I think makes the most sense is to match my ADS sensitivity multiplier. So my ADS is 0.85, I'm gonna also match that so it feels kind of one-to-one with my ADS. But if you leave it at one, it's gonna feel more like your hip fire sensitivity. Now aim response curve type is a little bit of a confusing one here and there are three different main curves. The standard curve is what a lot of people play on and this is just a general ramp up. So as we are, uh, the more pressure we put on our controller, the more we start to spin around faster and faster. Dynamic though is what the majority of the pro Warzone players are playing on. What Dynamic does is when we first touch it, there's a little bit more of a quicker speed, but then in that mid area, it's kind of more slow and precise. And I think the why the reason people like that is it allows us to be very quick in close quarters aiming and movement. However, when we're trying to kind of have that fine precision control with aiming kind of at mid to long range, it's a little bit more controlled uh, because of that. Now linear is there's no curve, it is dead straight. And this is very good for people with pure aiming, but it's very hard to move and turn around quickly in close quarters. So I recommend dynamic for most people, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with standard as well. Now, something that's new is you can actually do show more and you can decide how much of the uh, curve you want it to have. So let's say you like linear, but you want it to not be as uh, just straight linear. You could put it on dynamic and then turn this down. And the closer you get to zero, the closer you are to linear. So me personally, I don't mess with it. Just leave it at 100 because I like dynamic, but that is an option. ADS sense multiplier focus. This is going to be when we are focusing or holding our breath with a sniper, you can adjust your sensitivity. If you leave this at one, it's going to match whatever your ADS sensitivity multiplier is. I just like to leave it at one, but that is an option if you want to do that. But it's kind of bad for muscle memory purposes in my opinion. ADS sensitivity transition timing. There's three options here. I'm going to recommend instant for most players. Instant means that if your ADS sense is something other than one, so like myself, it's 0.85, the instant I press L2 to aim my gun in, that, that change in sensitivity is going to occur. 
gradual it's going to occur as i'm aiming my gun in for an smg it's not a big difference but for a big slow heavy lmg you might feel that change as you start to aim the gun in and then after zoom it's not going to take effect until the gun is fully zoomed which i think could really mess with your aiming so i don't recommend that one like i said instant i think is the best for that one now you are you do have the ability to go in here and change sensitivities for different zooms here and i don't know why that one is set other than one so we're gonna go with that but i don't like to do this because again i think it's bad for muscle memory purposes so now let's cover aim assist and i want to first explain the two types of aim assist before i go too in depth in these settings here so number one there is your traditional aim slowdown which is when i get close to the target my sensitivity slows down so as i drag off it gets faster as i come back it gets slower when i get near the target the next type of aim assist is what's called rotational aim assist and you can see as i'm strafing left and right here even though i'm not touching my right stick my aim is actually kind of turning towards this bot here and as i come up here and watch this come across my screen and it didn't work that time because the one behind it kind of messed it up see how it dragged my aim all the way over there even though i never touched my right analog stick that is because as long as you are moving your left stick which i'm just pushing forward a little bit it will it will activate rotational aim assist so the rule of thumb is when you are fighting you always want to make sure that we are strafing left and right especially in close quarters or at longer ranges just make sure you're walking forward or backwards a little bit and it's going to engage that extra rotational aim assist which will literally help aim for you now as far as settings go obviously we want to have aim assist on with the aim assist type there has been different people that have tested these and basically between default and black ops there is no difference guys if one person says it's better it's it's just there's no difference they're literally the same thing i don't know why both are in the game now precision and focusing have smaller bubbles and supposedly are stronger however i've used these and i do not like the way they feel i think they make me they it's like i have to aim through it so i highly recommend just stick with default if you want to do black ops you can but it's literally the same thing and then third person ads correction of type this is if you play third person which only in zombies you can do is what it is so assist will give you the most aim assist in third person and then motion since they're aiming this is like the people that you aim the controller like by moving it around um i don't use that and i've never used it so i'm not going to explain how it works because i don't know to be honest all right moving on to the final tab here we're in the gameplay tab now and so this is going to be have to do more with like movement and things like that so automatic sprint should you play with automatic tactical sprint on overall i think if you're a decent player i recommend yes and what this means is simply as soon as i press the left stick my guy is going to start going into that tactical sprint which is where his gun is up this is going to help a lot with your movement so you don't have to actually press l3 to get in and out of your sprint and tactical sprint but if you don't like this if you hate this setting i'd recommend either do automatic sprint or off but in your tactical sprint behavior, make sure this is on single tap run because then all you have to do is press L3 once and you're gonna very quickly get into that tactical sprint. Now, this is a new setting for Warzone, slide maintain sprint. Make sure you turn this on. This will make your ability to get in and out of slide cancels so much easier. So when it's off, what happens is when I slide, I will stay in a slide and it's like you it, it like cancels it it's kind of kind of hard to explain i've been happening when i had this off on accident i was getting a ton of dead slides where i would crouch and not be able to get back into my sprint but when i turned it on i noticed that it's much easier to automatically get out of that uh, slide and get back to sprinting even if you don't actually cancel the slide so def definitely recommend that turning it on uh definitely seemed like it helped a lot with movement auto move forward we're gonna leave that off that's just not good for competitive purposes um for all the mantles i recommend turning all of these off so you don't accidentally mantle on something you don't want to for the slide and dive behavior now i recommend turning this on slide only simply because it makes your sliding much faster and more responsive if you do tap to slide there is actually a delay from when you hit the slide button to to until your guy actually starts to slide now i have to hold the dive on this setting and the problem is when we play on slide only which is what i recommend you can't dive and that is not going to work very well with like bondo and things like that 
but your sliding is just so much better and faster that I think it is worth the trade-off. Plunging underwater, I use free. This just means as soon as you look down, your guy will go and dive underwater. Uh, parachute auto deploy. I recommend leaving this off so you can get closer to the ground unless you're really bad about splatting and breaking your legs. Sprinting door bash, you're gonna wanna turn this on. That way you can sprint through a door and open it. Instead, if it's off, you have to manually hit open on the door. Ledge climb behavior. I recommend doing movement based because as soon as you press forward on the left analog stick, your guy's gonna automatically mantle and it just makes mantling over things much quicker and easier to do. Aim down sight behavior, definitely leave this on, on, on hold. Do not do toggle for this one. Um, for some reason, I'm not really sure why. I think this is a bug. These are locked and we can't change these. I'm not sure why that is, but this is perfectly fine the way they are. Focus behavior on toggle means when I hit L3 once, it's gonna hold my breath. Whereas if it's on hold, I have to continue to hold L3 to hold my breath while using a sniper. Weapon mount activation is how you get into a mount. So I do ADS melee. Um, I do not recommend ADS because you will accidentally mount on things a bunch. Double tap ADS is fine if that's what you prefer. So for me, I aim and I hit R3, which is my mount. For a lot of you guys, uh, it might be circle if you are playing on tactical though. For the exit delay, I recommend turning this to instant because it's gonna allow you to get off that mount if you need to much quicker instead of it being on medium or long. Tax stance activation is how you get into your tax stance. This is whatever your preference is. Uh, I do ADS down because I don't use it very often. So I have the ADS hit down to get into my tax stance and then it stays in that. And there is a setting for that as well. Tax stance behavior I have on toggle. And that means that it will always stay uh, on tax stance until I go and toggle it off. You can also do once. So that means it'll, auto, it'll go back to just normal aiming unless you hit the uh, tax stance button again. To make looting way faster and easier, make sure you change your interact reload behavior to prioritize interact. This means you only have to tap to interact. So like looting chest, looting things off the ground, opening doors, things like that. This does mean you have to hold to reload though. So that might take a second to get used to, but for Warzone, this is a very useful setting. Armor plate behavior, make sure this is on apply all, makes it so much easier to put all of your plates on. ADS stick swap, leave this off, trust me. Backpack control, directional buttons. For backpack control, I leave this on directional buttons, which means I have to use my directional pad or D-pad to move around in the backpack. But if you like to use the stick, you can do that. I just personally am not a big fan of that. Depleted ammo weapon switch. This means when you run out of ammo, your guy will, if it's on, will automatically switch weapons. I turn this off because I find when I run out, it's habit for me to hit it and then it switches back to it. But this is kind of just really whatever your personal preference says. Quick C4 detonation. If we leave this on group, that means if I have multiple C4s out and I double tap my interact button, which for me would be square, it's going to blow up both C4s. One by one would be you'd blow up the first one and then you hit it again to blow up the second one. Manual fire behavior. Now, this is an interesting setting for certain guns, such as like the DG 58 or 56 assault rifle. If you put this on hold, it basically, you just have to hold your trigger button and it's gonna auto burst it. Whereas press, it is a true semi-automatic. You have to click it multiple times for it to go. But other guns like pistols, it's like super slow. So for some people, it, for some guns, it is nice to put this on hold. Other guns like pistols, you wanna leave it on press to be able to shoot faster. We'll fly through some of these last settings here of vehicle behaviors here. A lot of these I have just simply left as default and then our overlay behaviors here down at the bottom. So I do wanna also quickly cover the view tab under the graphic settings because this pertains to the field of view here. So I play on the max of 120, but I wanna show the difference from 80, which is the default. Um, so 80 is much more zoomed in. I have a smaller peripheral uh, field of view here. And when I move, it looks like I'm moving a lot slower compared to when I'm on the max of 120. And when I aim my gun, I also seems like it seems like I have more recoil. The reason for that is when we zoom out to a wider field of view, like 120, we now have a almost like a visual glitch that makes it look like I'm moving faster. And because the gun is farther away from me, it looks like I have a little bit less recoil. So that's the benefit of a bigger field of view is uh, less visual recoil. However, the bigger it is, the smaller your targets are gonna now appear. So if you feel like your enemies are too small, try turning this down some. For most people, if, especially if you're coming from console and you're not used to this, I'd recommend maybe going between like 90 to 100. 
But as you get more used to this, there is a lot of benefits from playing on a bigger field of view, like 110, 115, and 120. The majority of Warzone pros are playing on 120, but there's a lot that play around 110 to 115. More of the CDL pros that play multiplayer do play on lower field of views, like around the 100 or so mark though. And then for your ADS field of view, most people are gonna prefer affected. Now, independent is interesting because what independent does is it gives us this wide field of view, but when I aim my gun, it zooms in a lot more. So you get that more visual recoil, but targets are gonna be bigger and easier to see on independent versus on affected my field of view doesn't change when i aim my gun so again most people play on affected but there's nothing wrong with uh independent if that's just what you prefer and then for all the other ones generally the weapon field of view third person vehicle you want to keep these on wide because it, again it kind of just gives you a little bit less visual recoil slightly and kind of makes takes up less space uh, when it comes to the, the gun blocking space in your field of view. And then also quickly in these camera settings, make sure all of these are off and the movements are on least. That way there is a lower amount of kind of shaking and blur and so that you can just see better simply. All right, so now that we have all of our settings put together, if especially if you change settings, you wanna to try to start getting used to them, practice your aim, get better. Let me show you guys my method of how I warm up and a great way of just improving your aim. So go to Modern Warfare 3 Multiplayer and go to Create a Private Match. You do have to own the multiplayer to do this, unfortunately. It'll take a few seconds for it to load in for it to allow you to start changing these settings, but we're gonna to go to our game setup here, change our mode to free for all. For our map, this is gonna depend on what we're working on, but for most situations, Rust, Shipment, or there's also a new map training facility that is good, especially if we're just working on kind of close range type situations. In the game rules here, you can change your time limit and score limit to whatever you want. Normally I do at least 100 or so, but that is personal preference here. For the health, make sure this is on the max of 300 and turn our health regen to fast. Going over to team here, you don't really need to change any of this, but if you want, you can turn your radar to always on, constant or directional. In gameplay, make sure your spawn ammo mags is max, health steal is on, and then also kill streaks is turned off. Now, if you don't know how to add a bots here, you're gonna go actually up into this plus sign right under your name right here, hit plus, and we're gonna add the max amount of bots basically. If you want, you can turn it down a little bit. So for the purpose of this, I'll come down to about eight or so and just go ahead and leave it on recruit. We're gonna hit confirm and then we are going to start the match. So now that when here, if you're learning new settings, just go around and you're gonna kill a bunch of bots. It's literally that simple, nothing to it. However, my method for very quickly improving your aim is a little bit different. And if you've watched my videos before, you guys already know exactly what I'm gonna do here. Go to your controller settings, go to your aiming tab, go down to the bottom where aim assist and turn it off. Now with our aim assist off, we're gonna walk around here and we're gonna try to kill at least 50-ish bots or so. Do this for a few minutes. This is what I do for my warm up. I'll kill at least 50 bots, maybe a hundred if I have a little bit extra time here. And we're gonna go around, we're gonna kill bots with aim assist off, we're gonna keep doing this, work on movement, hit some slide cancels, all that good stuff here. Once I've killed my 50 bots, now we go back in, we turn our aim assist back on, and now you're gonna feel like you have absolute aimbot because you're not, you're used to aiming without it. So now you're gonna give you have a better feel and better kind of understanding for how that uh, aim assist functions. And while we're doing this, make sure you're working on always strafing left and right, and also work on utilizing movement at the same time. Guarantee if you do this every day for 10 minutes before you jump on, you will see a massive, massive improvement in your aim and also in your movement. So ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna wrap things up. I hope you found this video helpful. Again, if you're interested in checking out one of those aim controllers, please consider using code TCAPTHENX. It does help support me. Thanks so much for watching. We'll have more informational videos coming soon. We're gonna do an aim guide and a movement guide here in the near future as well. Of course, with lots of more loadout videos, graphic settings, all that stuff coming in the near future. So thanks for watching guys. We'll see you in the next one.